Very soon, the streets of Britain are swamped with lines of marching men in search of work, on hunger marches, or promoting a new big idea. Among them are the most disciplined, impressive marchers of them all. Yes, it's the green shirts. The who? The what? The green-clad shock troops of the People's Fighting Front. As the green shirts came to be known, believed in a fairer society, the joys of outdoor living, but above all, the overthrow of the banking system. The Green Shirts were founded by a charismatic former scout leader called John Hargrave, also known as White Fox. Hargrave's movement had begun in the 1920s as a non-political organisation called the Kindred of the Kibbo Kift. They were dedicated to the joys of camping, handicrafts, world peace and silly dancing. There was a lot of silly dancing in the 20s, but the mood of the 30s was darker. Hargrave was converted to a new economic theory called social credit, which seemed a middle way between capitalism and communism. Working or not, young, old, sick, everybody would get directly their share of the national dividend. Why? Because the credit of a community belongs to the community. Very straightforward. And as a country grew richer through technical advance, everybody would have to work far less. Result, a leisure society. Now, what's wrong with that? Alongside the camping, the Green Shirt movement now came up with new political slogans and propaganda. Kibbo Kift dancing was out, marching was in, and the Green Shirts became more and more militant. A young unemployed man called Michael Murphy threw a green brick into the windows of number 11 Downing Street. On it were two slogans. Issue the national dividend and power to the green shirts. Social credit had gone gorilla. And the evolution of the green shirts from the mildly batty but entirely gentle Kibbo Kift to paramilitary street fighters is about as good a parable of the age as you're likely to get. <laughs> 